today's ECE 438 student lecture. My name is Ben Capano, and I'm going to be talking about how to find the four-year transform of a rep in a comb. So a little bit before we get into how to find the four-year transform of these things, I want to talk about how you would find, or what a rep is defined as, and what a comb would also be defined as. So I think about a rep as being the periodic repetition of a signal in the time of day. Uh, sorry for using the word definition there a little bit, but it's, it's, it's literally what it is. So for example, if you have this signal, time of day, uh, something random like that, um, A to A and B, for example, so this is your X of T, um, then the rep of that would be multiplying it by a um, by some sort of impulse train so that you're copying the signal every T, uh, every, every period of T, I guess. So it would turn into something that looks like this. And you have a copy of the signal, the original copy. You would have a copy of T. You would have a copy of 2T. And so on and so forth. Um, so it's literally just multiplying your your time domain signal by an impulse train so that it copies every, every T periods. Um, so a comb is a little bit different. I always have a little bit harder time trying to visualize what a comb would look like. Um, but, I, but I think it helps to look at it graphically. And I think if you actually think about a comb, that, that is something that also might help. So say, for example, you have this signal, um, the time domain again. So imagine literally taking a comb, right, and, and combing out parts of the signal. So I, I, brought, I brought my comb. Say you, say you put it on a signal like that. What you get when you do that is little pulses, right, these things, that have the same height as what the signal would have normally. So I, I think about it more as a periodic sampling of the signal in time of um, So these are, I guess I better connect these. But. So what you're left with is something that looks like an impulse train of varying heights and heights Correspond to the height of the actual function. So again, this is this would be the cone. Right there. Um, okay, so now I want to move into how you find the Fourier transform of a rep and a cone. So, all right. So when you find a, the Fourier transform of, of a rep, we'll start with that. Um, it's going to end up being so uh, rep, period t. X of T, your original signal. It's going to be the same thing as taking your original signal, involving it with an impulse train of some period, of the period T. So to find the Fourier transform of this whole rep, um, you're obviously going to need to take the Fourier transform of the signal and multiply it by the Fourier transform of the impulse train, because that in uh, multiple, or Convolution in the time domain is equivalent to multiplication of frequency. Um, so we're going to find the Fourier transform of an impulse train first, because that's going to be important for both the rep and the comb. So say you have some impulse train, um, which looks like a delta function in the time domain, t minus k, big t, 